This is the first project of the Snap Circuits Pro Kit, which is AM radio. This is a very crude version of an AM radio using only one integrated circuit, the high frequency one, and it's not very loud, even though you have the RV to control the volume. You can tune the adjustable capacitor to cycle through the stations. You hear a little bit of talking. But again, it's not a very good one, and I wouldn't recommend. I certainly wouldn't recommend it for everyday use. This is going to be an FM radio. When I turn on the slide switch, you'll hear a station being broadcast through the speaker. The T button on the FM module is used to cycle through the stations, and the range for the module is 88 to 108 megahertz. You can reset it to the lowest frequency by hitting the R button. The station may take a few seconds to register, but other times you have to hit the T button. I'm not sure how many stations are included, but the antenna is built into the module, so you don't need the A1 antenna like for the AM radio. FM stands for a frequency modulation. And FM radio has many advantages over AM radio. For example, the signal is much clearer, and also it's less likely to be distorted if you like move to a certain, like I insulated area like if you uh, change locations in your room or you go under a bridge or through a tunnel however one downfall to fm radio is that the signal is shorter it does not travel as far that's why example radio station an fm radio station from new york city may not be picked up through an analog receiver in let's say California. But if you have a digital radio, like on the internet, then you can. Thank you very much for watching. This is a recording device in which you can speak or sing into the microphone. When you turn on the slide switch, you'll hear a beep from the speaker indicating that recording has started. You have up to eight seconds and the speaker will beep again after the time is up and then you can hit the press switch to play what you had said or sang back hello how are you doing today then afterwards the speaker will play one of three christmas songs recorded pre-recorded on the integrated circuit, built into the integrated circuit. And that takes us to the next project where you can push the press switch to cycle through the different songs. First, my recording will play. And you can probably recognize 
the Christmas songs that the speak that are played on the speaker. And there you have it. I replace the press switch with the photo resistor. And when I turn on the slide switch, I can turn the music on and off by waving my hand over the photo resistor as light is shining on it. It will record your voice, most likely. And there you have it. I replaced the press switch with the PMP transistor. And when I tap, every time I tap the, these two contacts with my fingers, the music will turn on or off. You may need to wet your fingers for better conductivity. But I'm not going to let the whole songs play because I already did so in Project 309. The lamp, by the way, is only used to limit current, so it won't be very bright. This is an amplified voice recorder. Unlike the one in Project 308 where the sound was quieter, it's going to be louder here because you have the U4 amplifier integrated circuit to strengthen the sound. So I'm going to record something and play it back. Would you like to go out to the movies with me tonight? For some reason it's garbled, but... The sound is nowhere as clear as it was in the previous project. Pretty funny. With this amplifier, unfortunately, volume, when volume is increased, quality is sacrificed at least in uh, these projects. This is a simpler FM radio without volume control. You would use the T button on the FM module to cycle through the station and the R button to reset the frequency to 88 megahertz. This is a mega circuit. As you can see, it includes a lot of different parts, including some that have not been used yet, such as the seven segment display and the voltage meter. When I turn on the slide switch, the two LEDs plus the seven segment display will come on. And now they are supposed to flash, but for some reason they do not. I checked my batteries and they're good and I checked my wiring countless times, but you would have the voltage meter set to the low setting and the adjustable resistor would control the rate at which all the LEDs flash on and off, including the seven segment display. And so a lot of different parts will be working at once. This is the SCR 2.5 volt light bulb. This is the SCR or Q3, which is an electronic switch with three LEDs, a node, cathode, and gate. Like a standard diode, it allows current to only flow in one direction, and it will only conduct in the forward direction when triggered by a short pulse or steady voltage that is applied between the gate and the cathode terminals. 
one set of batteries in this circuit will power the lamp, while the other will trigger the SCR. When I turn on the slide switch, nothing happens. Then when I push the press switch, the SCR will turn on the lamp. And then to turn the lamp off, I'm going to have to turn off the slide switch. Then when I turn it back on again, I'll have to push the press switch again to turn the light back on. Now when the slide switch is turned on, nothing will happen. Then when I push the press switch, the phantom motor spin. In this circuit, the gate of the Q3 resistor is connected to the batteries via the R2 resistor. The motor will spin until I turn the slide switch off. Turn it back on and push the press switch and there you have it. When I remove one end of the red jumper wire from the circuit, the happy birthday song plays. This is a music alarm in which you could use a longer wire and run it like across a doorway or wherever so that if an intruder removed or cut the wire, music would play. But this would just be for demonstration purposes only. I replaced the R3 resistor with the photo resistor and remove the jumper wire. Now shining light on the photo resistor will trigger the alarm, the music. Cover it and remove your hand to reset it. You need a decent amount of light for the alarm to work. When I cover the photoresistor and turn on the slide switch, the red LED comes on, but the motor and lamp stay off. Then when sufficient light reaches the photoresistor, the motor and lamp come on also. The S3 relay is connected to the motor and lamp via the Q3 module when there's no light on the photoresistor to begin with, they will stay off. Then, when there is light, they will come on. This is the first project to use the voltage meter, or M2. It is set, right now, it is set to the low setting, or 10 milliamp setting. And... On its own, it can measure up to 300 microamps. Now, when I turn on the slide switch, the range with the R1 resistor, the range is now the 3 milliamps. The meter's range has increased tenfold. The lower the resistor value, the wider the range of the meter, and you can use this to measure electrical current in any given device or component and it contains a magnetic field and it contains a fixed magnet and a movable coil around it and the coil moves or deflects when an electric current flows through it and then the coil is connected to the pointer to show how much current is flowing through that particular device or part. This project allows you to measure how strong your batteries are. Now together, two AA batteries produce three volts of power. These batteries are brand new. They have never been used. I'm going to place the battery holder with them between these two points and watch the meter. It registers at full power. Now, when I use batteries that are not that old, but nonetheless used, there's really no difference, but if I had even older batteries, the meter would not register anything. 
and you can definitely, this is a quick way to test the strength of your batteries. Here, you can determine how the adjustable resistor or RV works by moving its lever when it is hooked up to the voltage meter. Right now, it reads about two milliamps. But as I slowly move the lever on the adjustable resistor down, its resistance decreases and now more current can flow through the circuit and therefore the meter. And now it's at 10, close to like about nine and a half milliamps. Move the lever back up and the resistance increases. Now the amount of current flowing through the circuit is five milliamps. Here you can test the function of the photoresistor with the voltage meter. The photoresistor is a light sensitive resistor, so its value changes according to the amount of light that reaches it. When it is covered, its resistance is almost infinite, but when a bright light shines on it, there's only about 1,000 ohms of resistance. So when I shine a bright light on it, you can see how much current flows through the circuit. Almost nine milliamps. You can produce current by spinning the motor. The meter is on the 10 milliamp setting and when I turn the motor clockwise, the meter will deflect to the right. But when I turn it counterclockwise, it will deflect to the left because the direction in which you turn the motor determines the direction the current flows. This is another circuit that demonstrates how the Q3 diode works. When I turn on the slide switch, nothing happens. Then when I push the press switch, the lamp comes on due to the direction in which the current must flow. And when I turn off, when I push the press switch again, nothing happens. Turning off the slide switch resets the circuit. And now when you turn it back on, you'll have to hit the press switch again to light the lamp.